What's up, people? Welcome to the 2024 Man Cave Tour. I haven't done one of these in two years, and I've done some upgrades to the space, so I figured it was time to do a new video. So in this video, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail than I usually do in these videos. So I'm gonna have y'all grab a drink, grab a snack. It's gonna be a little longer video, but I think I'm gonna give y'all a lot of good ideas on some things that you can do to upgrade your man cave space. So we're gonna start off in the man cave, but then at the end of the video, we're gonna go into the home theater and see what we have in the home theater, which is my favorite space. But let's go ahead and get started. Now we're gonna start off on this digital movie poster, which is one of my favorite DIY projects that I've done. Pretty much just used a old 32 inch TV that I wasn't using and an old laptop to make this work. Now this is working using an app called the Movie Poster app. Um, I'll have this link down in the description if you wanna check it out. It's a free app that you can use that pulls movie posters from the internet and displays them on your screen. Now it has a lot of options to it. So there's a lot of customization that you can do to this to make it your own. A really cool project that I think will take your man cave to the next level. Now we're gonna move on to the actual bar itself. Now I actually have never really covered this in a video, but I actually had an older bar here before and I wanted to take that out and put this one in. Now this is built using your basic already pre-built kitchen cabinets that you can buy from Home Depot or Lowe's depending on the size that you want you can you know put multiple uh, sections together and all I had to really do was build the wall for the half ball part for the actual part where people sit now this project probably took if I had to guess around maybe 11 to $1,200 to build the whole bar and that's including the countertops which are made using an epoxy so this is actually a different uh, countertop that you saw in the first video. I actually re-poured it uh, because I think the, the first one had a little bit too much going on. It had blue, orange, and all these different colors. So I wanted something a little bit more subtle. So I switched it over to this uh, white and blue look, and I really love it. Uh, the epoxy countertops you'll see uh, throughout the video, uh, some other spaces in the video, but I just love how this epoxy turned out. Now we're going to move over to this bottle stand. This is another DIY project. If you're not already getting the gist of this, all of these projects are 100% DIY. Like I said before in other videos, I did not like paying people to do stuff. So all of these are going to be DIY projects. Now I saw these bottle stands on Amazon and the prices are ridiculous. And I'm talking about like five to $600 for these bottle stands. So of course, you know, I had to make my own using just some basic wood that you can get from Home Depot. I uh, use uh, a sheet of plexiglass to make the actual shelves. Uh, you spray paint them white and then you put the LEDs underneath to give it that, that cool glow effect. Definitely a, a very cheap and inexpensive project. This probably cost me less than $200 to make and I think it turned out pretty good. Now over top of the bar, you'll see this is the Sony Bravia XBR 65X85. And this is a 65 inch smart TV. Now this was released in 2021, so you probably can't even buy this TV. And that's a good thing because this TV for some reason is one of the slowest and most laggy TVs I've ever purchased. And that was from when I brought it. Now this is using the X1 processor and I think that's one of the reasons that it was slow, slow. But it's an easy fix just to put a chrome stick or Amazon Fire Stick on it and you don't really have to deal with the built-in interface. Now as you can see up on this bulkhead, this was a space that wasn't really used but I saw that I was like, oh I could put some pictures up here and actually put this space to use. So I got my dad to frame up some of my old photos from you know back in my sports days and some photos from my brothers when they're playing sports and I, I think it, it gives like a nice little personal touch to the space now down in the comment section let me know if any of these projects that I cover in this video gave you an idea or inspired you to do anything in your man cave I'm curious to see 
with one of these projects y'all gonna incorporate into y'all space so drop those down in the comment section now we're gonna go over to the liquor cabinet now uh, a lot of people asked about where i got this from now if you want to get one of these it's kind of tricky but if i had to give you some advice i would tell you to go to your local liquor store what happens is uh the liquor distributors will give these to the liquor store so chances are your local liquor store will have some of these sitting in the back of their store in a box because they are giving to them for free so if you you know offer 50 bucks i actually got this one for 50 bucks so uh if you would be interested in something like this uh just go down to your local liquor store and, and ask if they have something in the back now we're going to move on to my theater riser now uh this actually i actually have a dedicated video on how i built this riser and another thing i have a dedicated video on the digital movie poster as well i don't know if i uh, mentioned that earlier but i have a digital movie poster video to show you how to make that and i have a video for this theater riser now i definitely love the way this is laid out to give the back row an elevated view so everywhere it can be that perfect seat in the house now on the back of that second row is another bar that i made just from scraps from when i was making the other bar and the top of this is also made with epoxy and as you can see on the bottom it's just being held up by some three quarter inch pipe that i have screwed into the riser so uh, a really really simple project to make this and it gives those three extra seats in the back so if you can sit back there and enjoy the show now on this side of the cave we have the sony 80j 75 inch now i recently replaced this tv uh, the tv that was here is the tv that is now over the bar with the 120 hertz refresh rate i have it paired up with the ps5 this is where the kids come down to play the game on the back side of the cave you can see the diy arcade machine i built now I also have a video, not for this particular machine, but I do have a video on a similar build that I use to make a smaller version of this same machine. So if you'd be interested in making something like this, I have a video for that. I'll have that link down in the description. But this is like a really cool project that I did. One of my favorites, one of my first projects I did. Now this is built using just your regular MDF board and the whole system is ran from a Raspberry Pi. Now again, this is another project that I used one of my spare TVs I had laying around, 32 inch TV. A really fun project that came in a little bit under $1,000. All right, so our last stop before we go into the home theater is my step lighting. Again, this is another project that I've done that I did a video on, on the channel. So if you wanna get a more in-depth uh, description on how to do this, uh, check out for that video but the short of it is i just ran two govi make sure that govi you'll catch that thing throughout this video but govi lights going up the side of the steps and i think it really gives a really cool effect when you're coming down into the man cave uh space that is normally much forgotten and i think it gives it a really cool look all right so that's it for out here i'm going to do one quick pan around just to make sure i didn't forget anything if you see anything in this man cave that you're curious about that I didn't cover in the video, uh, definitely drop it down in the comment section. I can either tell you about it in the comments or if it's something that needs a little bit more explanation, I can make a video. So before we go into the home theater, if you got any value from this video, do me a favor, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button. All of that definitely helps the channel and I definitely appreciate it. All right, so let's go in to the home theater. All right, so the first thing in the home there that we're going to cover is the Samsung Q80 QLED TV. This is a 75 inch, one of my favorite TVs in the house. Now, you know, uh, Samsung doesn't really do the OLED, but they do the QLED, which I think is the, you know, the next best thing from OLED. Definitely has a, a bright picture, has that vivid colors that I really like. 
and one of my favorite TVs in the house. Now paired up with the Q80, I have it hooked up to this Pioneer VSX 834 audio receiver. Now this is a 7.2 channel receiver, 135 watts per channel. And the reason that I really picked this one is because the 7.2 channel I have the Dolby Atmos, which really, really takes your audio to the next level. Uh, as far as the speakers on the system, I'm using some really, really budget speakers. These are the Polk Audio T series. So the front channel is the T30, and then the bookshelf speakers on the two on the front and the two on the back are the T15s. Something that I definitely want to upgrade in the future, but I definitely think it's really important to get what you can get at the time. I know a lot of people, but you know, just wait, save up their money for years, years and years till they can get exactly what they want. I want to enjoy my space as soon as possible. So I got these speakers again. Of course, I want to eventually upgrade the speakers, the receiver, and also our next thing, which is the projector. So this projector is the ViewSonic PX700. This is a 1080p projector with 3500 lumens, has HDMI, VGA, and USB inputs on the back. I had another ViewSonic right, like actually right when I bought this and it was 720. I immediately took that back and got this one because I gotta at least have 1080p. You can definitely see the difference in the clarity and the brightness. I think this is the minimum that you need in a, a real home theater. This comes in at around $500, so I don't think anything in a price point less than that is going to give you what you're really looking for as far as the, the visual quality. And eventually, this is another thing that I want to upgrade to a 4K projector. So uh, be on the lookout because, of course, when I get that, I'm going to be making a video on it. Now this projector is being projected onto this 100 inch drop down motorized projector screen. Now this is a screen I got from Micro Center, but uh, they sell these on Amazon. Again, I'll have the links for all of this stuff down in the description if you wanna check it out. But if I wanna get into that full movie mode and I don't wanna watch it on a 75 inch, I can just drop down this screen, fire up the projector, and get that full cinema experience. I really love the immersion you get when you're watching movies on the projector. Now, all of my video sources from the projector and from the TV are coming from the NVIDIA Shield. Now, this NVIDIA Shield has the Tegra X1 Plus processor, two gigs of RAM, eight gigs of storage, and you can actually expand it with your micro SD card. But I really love it because of the interface. It's fast, it's snappy, and it's using that base Google operating system that I feel is the best when it comes to navigating through the apps and the different um, programs that you're gonna be using. Now, of course, this has 4K HDR streaming, Google Assistant, and you can actually game on this if you wanted to. So now we're gonna move on to the back of the home theater, and we're gonna take a look at the home theater seating. I only really had one requirement when I got these seats, and it was that they be 100% pure leather. Now, I got these from fourseating.com. Now, if you look on this website, you can get lost on the different varieties of home theater seating that they have. They can get really, really expensive, but they definitely have some nice things to check out on that website. Next thing we're going to check out is the Lumari Sync Box. Again, this is another product that I have a video on if you want to check out and get more details on. But I really think this Sync Box took the theater to another level. Now, of course, you've seen a lot of the Sync Boxes where you get the, the colors around the TVs. And I think that's really cool. But these took it to the next level. These actually come with four recess lights that you can mount into the ceiling. And those recess lights will match what's going on on the TV, which really will take your immersion in the home theater to another level. If you want to see more about those, I'll have the link for that video down in the description. 
definitely one of my favorite upgrades that I made to the space. And last but not least, one of my favorite DIY projects that I've done down here in the man cave for the home theater, and that's the DIY star ceiling. Now, a lot of you might have seen this video already, but this thing is still going strong. Still one of my favorite, favorite projects that I've done on this channel or inside the man cave. And I think this is the one thing that really took the home theater to another level. Just laying down here, looking up at the stars is, is, is really a special thing. So again, I'm curious, which one of these projects in this video are you gonna implement into your man cave? I'm really curious to hear. So meet me down in the comment section. Let's talk about it. I wanna thank y'all for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.